Okay, and now we've got Delith and Ross from Bangor University uh, who can talk about uh, voice technology. I think. Yeah. Well, I'll leave it to you to introduce us. Something like that. Yes. Okay, so this is a joint presentation, and we're going to speed it up because I know everybody wants their lunch by now. Um, so my day job is as the head of the Language Technologies Unit at Bangor University. And then I turned to Ross and said, how do you want to describe yourself? Because Ross is retired yeah. and um, spends a great deal of time uh, doing voluntary work in localising open source software for Welsh and is also leading... Uh, particularly now with uh, Mozilla's Common Voice project in getting people to donate their voices for the Welsh um, version of it. And we do sort of work a lot in tandem on that. And just to say, to begin with as well, Wikimedia and Mozilla. I've been, this is my third cutting up conference. Love it. Brilliant since the, the, the first two and brilliant this time as well. So thank you, Mark, for organising it. But I do notice there's sort of two constituencies here. You have the Wikipedians who are, you know, Wikimedia is their life and that's great and they're very focused on that. And then there's the other constituency, which is language activists. Those of us who are really focused on our languages and on using any open source tools we can to promote our languages. And for us... Wikimedia is just one of the tools we use because we're all also after Mozilla and we're after um, Open Office or um, any, any other open source tool we can use to promote our languages. So this is good. We're bringing those two communities together, maybe. And this um, talk in particular looks at the synergy here between our two worlds because there is a common um, source of values and a co common vision, I think, between Wikimedia and Mozilla. But we're uh, all trying to be um, open and inclusive and ha have this sort of global online community where we can help each other. So we're sh about, it's about sharing knowledge without barriers or prejudice. And we've heard um, a great deal about that yesterday and today. And, and this is different. This is different from the other global companies that are driven by profit, profit commercial considerations, you know, the Googles and the Amazons and the um, Microsofts of this world. Um, that's a whole different ballgame because they're not interested in minoritized or less resourced languages because it's of no commercial interest to them. But for us, we're very thankful that Wikimedia, Mozilla and so on allow us to participate in their world. So thank you, Wikimedia, and thank you, Mozilla, for having contributed through your inclus inclusivity to the well-being of our small and minoritized language communities. So to talk a bit more about Mozilla's Common Voice project, this is about speech technology. This is about creating um, speech recognition in a multilingual environment. Mozilla set, set it up primarily for their own deep speech project, but they've put the data up there openly for anybody to download it and to reuse it in their own environment. So you can use this data for something completely different, or as we're doing in our university, we're creating our own speech recognition. We're using this data, not necessarily through deep speech, but we will be using that as well. But the licensing is CC0, so it's a very open, permissive license. You can do anything with it. Um, because we need the, all this data, because you really need huge data sets for speech recognition. This is, you know, there are new methods now of creating speech technology through neural network, neural network methodologies. But the amount of data you need, it's a challenge for English and big languages. It's a huge challenge for us. So it's currently available in 29 languages. Ross will tell you a bit more about that in a minute. 76 other languages are in progress at the moment. And if your language isn't there yet, ask for it, and it can be included. But it's not just, you know, you ask Mozilla and then you sort of sit back and wait for them to do all the hard work. Your language community has to participate in this. It's up to your language community then to gather those sentences and to get people to donate their voices and to do the recordings. But this is very empowering for your language community 
because we were in Mosfest in London talking to other language communities about this. And there were some people, especially, if I may say so, from the Indian um, subcontinent who thought, brilliant, we really need this for our language technologies. But as soon as we explained that how you do it and you need your community to participate, they didn't have that confidence because they had been, I think, sort of so downtrodden, really, in a colonial environment. They didn't have that confidence to do some of the work for themselves. So this is ongoing. This is great because we are now talking with them and engaging them and encouraging, encouraging them along this journey as well. So if you want to uh, engage with the Common Voice project, um, you need to translate the interface to begin with. So, you know, community volunteers need to, to do that. Then you have to gather example sentences uh, as a reading prompts uh, so that volunteers can read them aloud. Now, this isn't as easy as it seems um, because of licensing issues, but we'll talk more about that in the next slide. Um, so then, thirdly, you need to get people to record their voices, hundreds, thousands of pe people if possible, and then Mozilla stores them in a central database so you don't have to worry about the infrastructure, will these be kept somewhere safe and can everybody access them and so on. Um, so then you come to the final part which is actually creating a speech recognition uh, software engine, that's more difficult, that might be work for experts but we'll uh, come to that further along in the journey. The main problem with the sentence collection is that Common Voice is released under the CC0 license. And people, of course, the first thing that people said was, oh, Wikipedia sentences, ideal as reading prompts. Unfortunately, they're released under a share-alike license, which isn't as permissive. So, big problem. The nice thing here is that Mozilla and Wikimedia have got together and are now discussing this from a legal point of view and finding ways to be able to include some of these sentences um, uh, as reading prompts for um, uh, Common Voice. And this discussion is still um, uh, happening as we speak. I hope to have something definite to report by today, but I was to told, no, it's still ongoing. So watch this uh, space. But in the meantime, you can collect your sentences through using older material out of copyright, older novels and so on begging emails, social media posts, essays, stories, and, and so on from your friends. And uh, if they're free of copyright, that's another method. And also writing original sentences. So when I travel somewhere, I'm there on my little iPad writing original sentences to get us up to that um, figure. So it's a lot of work, but, you know, no, no pain, no gain. So uh, this is ongoing, and this can be done for any language. So how do you contribute and how do you get your community to contribute? So I'm handing over to Ross now because he's going to demonstrate um, a little bit on um, showing the website to you. Um, I think we'll, we'll be yeah, able to okay. continue maybe this afternoon informally if anybody's interested as well. Yeah, I th I'm going to show it to you on, on, um, on the screen here on the laptop. But most people, most people who, who have been contributing have been using their phones. Okay, so the website works well on the phone and people can contribute wherever they are easier on the phone than with a laptop. Um, okay, let's we'll just get out of, of these. Uh, this is what I try and find. Uh, okay, this is the, um, the English website. Oh. Hello? It won't show up. Should. No. Uh, possibly. Um, I'll just go back to the um, the link. Ah, oh, did you go through via the link? If you no, can. I didn't. No, no. No. Go okay. Yeah, no. if you go straight, if you go there, that should work. Yeah. Um, 
Sorry about that. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I can't get on the web on that one. For some reason, it's not showing. Um, I'll try another. Oh, right, I see. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sorry, okay. no, I don't know. Uh, get a yeah, yet. no, that's okay. It's Aaron. Oh, Aaron. You had an uh, issue with yours, didn't you? Um, yeah, I think the last week with If you minimise the presentation and then go to Google separately. Yeah. I think the problem is we've got too many things open. Okay. No? Okay, close that. Um, yes, I, um, I suppose we can have a, an early lunch. Um, the, the, the website has, has offers you two options in terms of recording and uh, validating. And you press the button or you click on the button to record, which takes you to another page which shows you clips for you to read. At the bottom of the page, there's an icon with a microphone. You click on that, and then you read out the clip. Um, and then you click on the button again, and that stops it. You then move on to another clip. You read that one, and it goes on for five clips. On the, um, on the right-hand side of the screen, there are buttons then for you to um, listen to the clips you recorded, re-record, whatever you feel hasn't come through properly because you need to check that you've read the whole clip completely and correctly. And once you're satisfied that all five of those are, are okay, you then click on the button, it moves on to the next five. So all of the recording is done on a five basis. After you clicked on the button, the whole lot is sent on to the server and kept by Mozilla. The other side of the contribution is around validating to make sure that everybody who's contributed um, has contributed correctly. Then what you do there, and again, it's in section of five clips, you listen to each clip. And if the person has read the sentence completely and correctly, you agree to it. You say yes. If there's an error, they haven't read it all, or with a lot of them, the, the, the recording is kind of clipped. They've pressed the button too quickly. Um, uh, you have to say no because it's important that the, the clip, the, the text matches up to the sound. So it has to be correct. I, sometimes the volume is a bit low, but I take it that the machine can deal with that. Um, so I say yes to those. But if the people haven't read them completely, um, it's, it's a no. I've also had instances where when people have recorded and showing people how to do the recording, they've included some of their introduction as well as the other person reading. Obviously, that has to be a no as well. So all of these then, all of these steps have to be taken and the quality needs to be um, there for the machine to be able to um, deal with the data, to be able to read the text and to listen to the sound and then to do it's kind of magic and create the technology. Um, I was going to show you a page where the, um, you could see how many languages have been offered, how many languages have been accepted, and the 76 languages that are um, on their way there. Um, I was, I was um, glad to see that um, Cadnowag is down there as well for, um, um, to be accepted. I, I think that there's there's quite a challenge there, obviously, to to, to create the five thousand um, uh, sentences. I'm not sure who that person is, um, but you know the the possibilities are there for all languages. Um, in in our situation, what, what I've been involved in doing is contacting individuals, friends I know, telling them about the opportunities to record their voices. I've also been in contact with 
agencies and organizations that I know have got a lot of Welsh speakers uh, working there and asking them would they run a campaign within their organization um, to increase um, the contribution. Um, the the, the mentor ICE um, Aaron is involved with, they've been very proactive in, in doing this and they're running a big campaign at the moment uh, intending to collect 20 hours by the 22 mentor ICE over 22 weeks, which I think is uh, you know, going to be quite substantial. Um, we're also in, in contact with Mozilla discussing um, uh, the fact that a number of organizations have asked whether they can do some kind of gamification. They'd like to do some kind of um, internal competition um, among staff so that you know, the different parts of the organizations can compete against each other. They've also shown an interest in various organizations competing against each other as well with the intention of increasing the number of contributions generally. So Mozilla are quite keen on that because they've already got meetings with some of the big companies in San Francisco, IBM and people like that. So they were in, interested in looking at it from a different perspective about how to get more people to contribute. Um, the, the, the situation with Wales is at the moment, I think we've got about 60 hours of contribution um, 48, 48 has been validated and we've got about 910 people who've um, created a profile and, and uh, contributing voices, which is, something, which is something that's really big for us because having that number of people getting involved in something of their own uh, volition is quite substantial. Okay. I've, how much time have we got left? Okay, there are, there are other languages that are, are interesting. Um, I think Kabila is one of them. We heard um, about the Berber languages yesterday. They, they seem to have um, been able to gather a, a substantial, far more than we have in Welsh, uh, substantial contribution from speakers. And that, that looks very interesting. The Catalans as well, they've been doing a lot of work on this and their, their kind of contribution percentage is, it seems to be higher than um, a lot of the major languages, if you like. So although this is based on English, um, around the needs of the kind of English-speaking um, uh, community, it is offering um, smaller languages the opportunity to get involved with the technology. Yeah. Okay, Dallas, do you want to answer the tricky technical questions that I can ask? It can, can have many uses, but the main one is to create speech recognition for your language because you can. there are open source platforms out there to build speech recognition, but it needs, it needs this, these fast data sets of actually different people speaking, or otherwise, if you do it all with one person, it will recognise that person speaking and not a lot of different people um, speaking. So um, the engine that we've used so far for Welsh is called Caldi. It's an open source platform. It's very difficult to, to use. Uh, we're fortunate that our uh, software yeah. engineer is led by Dewi. Uh, Dewi did the work with the um, Wikipedia as well, so he has to check, uh, turn his hands to many different things. But uh, using Caldi, he has had some um, success so far, but what they call the word error rate is still quite high. At the time, we only had 22 hours worth of recorded voices. It wasn't enough. We've had a later download of the work so far from um, Wiki, no, from uh, Mozilla Common Voice, doubled the hours. It's improved it a little, not a huge amount. So we're on to the 100 hours. It's the same for every language. You need, I'd say, 100 voices to make a decent and a, and a hundred hours of recording as well. I'm using one of these, Caldi, or we're looking now at um, Mozilla's own deep speech, which we're testing. We don't have a result of that yet, but that's the new, newer uh, neural net methodology. There will be other better engines in future. So this is a long-term project, um, but, but bit by bit, 
and, and if you might you can as a community you might be able to get the recording prompts together you might be able to get people um, to donate their voices it is more challenging to get somebody to build that speech engine for you afterwards but i think that is when we come to it we'll talk about at least doing something between the Celtic languages, I think that is an ambition of, of ours. And we started with doing text-to-speech because we didn't have any knowledge in Wales, we just had a whole load of cheek. And we got some joint funding, so we did it with the Irish, and we got text-to-speech for Welsh and Irish as, as for that. So we can join our forces at the platform level. A lot of organisations in Wales see the need to have this kind of technology in Welsh and therefore that's why they're willing to encourage their staff to contribute to Common Voice. They see the kind of Alexa um, type technology being, being very um, prominent in the future and that especially when they're providing services that they expect people to expect to have the means of contacting them or dealing with them through voice activity technology. Okay, so next up, lunch, and uh, that's over the usual place.